Hello Internet and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That Africa Wednesday. As always, I'm your host Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about green bonds, but don't be deceived, they'll still put you in the red. In Africa and around the world, this is a new concept with Nigeria recently releasing the first African green bonds. Working hard to deliver the country's first ever environment focused debt capital market product called Nigeria Green Bonds. Now since Nigeria sold those bonds in May of 2017, green bond sales have succeeded more resoundingly than President Zuma's family members asking him for a job. Deep cut if you're following South African corruption, a problem that the country has been struggling with since, well, a presumably mustachioed British person bumped into that land and thought, hmm, I could probably do a better job governing. Anyways, back to green bonds, because they're in season right now. Let's start in Kenya, where the Bankers Association is developing the country's first green bond. We are talking now about the green bond, which was listed by the city of Johannesburg today. The New Development Bank, or NDB, is issuing its first green bond worth 3 billion yuan. All right, full disclosure, I realized that last report sounded about as African as a snowstorm. But that was the New Development Bank, an investment bank that is dedicated to financing projects in developing countries some of which exist in Africa. So while these bonds sound good to everyone out there, before you really go into discussing their effectiveness, we need a little more basic information. For example, while I understand that Nigeria has a spotless record on money management, I mean I just gave one of their princes a few thousand dollars to return to his throne there, and I'm expecting his check any day now. What is going to keep these governments using money raised by green bonds to finance green projects? I mean, I know green energy is great, but I can think of a different green that's a little more powerful. Well, that was a surprisingly hard question to find an answer to. It turns out that there is yet to be a standardized definition of a green bond, so I could sell you a bond to build an oil pipeline printed on recycled paper and call it a green bond. In China, the biggest source of green bonds last year, notes could be used to fund coal power plants, if the project meets certain criteria. And major oil producers have also started selling their own green bonds. Don't stop listening yet though, because there is a more positive story here. A Luxembourg-based group is attempting to standardize what they title green bond entails and Bloomberg LP offers its own green bond tags for verified green bonds. And there's a full list you can see if you go to www.climatebonds.net. Many of these African bonds have been certified as legitimate by these agencies, which is great, but leads to another question. Why? Now I realize that many people would say, it's the environment, everyone has to kick in. But let's dig a little deeper. Why would a country with a full-grown Boko Haram insurgency, a failing economy, and a healthcare system that would make Mitch McConnell run back to Obamacare, sell bonds where they're constrained to environmental development? Well, let's see if this helps. And staying in Nigeria, S&P Global Ratings has downgraded Nigeria's debts, moving the country further into junk territory. Yes, it turns out Nigeria and a lot of countries like it couldn't sell a government bond if their lives depended on it. Which, in some cases, they do. Nigeria is selling all sorts of bonds to raise money for anything people want. It's the first time the Nigerian government is seeking to raise money through an Islamic secret bond. Yes, they're also the first to issue an Islamic bond, which, considering the land while they're currently fighting with Boko Haram, seems a little odd. Okay, so we've established that these bonds might not be Al Gore's fantasy incarnate, but to dismiss them so cynically would be a disservice to the whole idea of green bonds. They're actually doing a lot of good as well. As of this recording, green bonds have raised more than $123 billion, which is more than 17 times what the US EPA spends on average per year. And considering those countries are about one eleventh the size of the United States, we should expect to see some real green growth. One huge advantage to green bonds is it helps with over-reliance of some countries on oil. For example, 88% of Nigeria's exports in 2010 were petroleum not even including other natural gases. 
Some estimates predict that recently that's gone up to 95%. Now that makes their future success more dependent on something they can't control than one of the Trump kids. The price of petroleum has not exactly been stable recently and with every drop in value Nigeria takes a large hit. Now you might be thinking, Stephen, with the price of gas dropping wouldn't it be wise for a country like Nigeria to get high on their own supply? Well, there are a few reasons for not continuing to use petroleum that are not directly tied to the environment. First, you have new jobs. As part of activities under the presidential initiative on rural solar home lighting systems, it is projected to create 500 direct jobs, including solar installers and agents, as well as another 5,000 indirect jobs within a minimum period of 24 months. I like that. There's also the Nigerian Green Bond Summit where it was agreed We seek to achieve 30% of renewable energy by the year 2030. This is important because there are quite a few villages that live off the grid and giving them solar panels would give them access to energy for the first time. Nigerian politicians say that their primary focus is targeting off-grid solar power projects which could additionally give them Oh, I don't know, a second product to export? Another important project that they're working on is cleaning up their oil spills and ending the practice of oil flaring in the oil rich region of the Niger Delta. As you can anticipate, none of this is exactly cheap to fix, but a strange thing emerges when you have green bonds in such high demand. The government has so much money earmarked for the specific task of environmental policy that they can afford to engage in monetarily exclusive projects. This also opens up the possibility of reallocating unearmarked funds into portions of the economy that might otherwise be neglected. Although that is a bit of a naive interpretation considering the Nigerian government embezzles money like it's well, it's an oil-rich African quasi-democracy, so there's no better example out there. Now, I couldn't have an episode about green bonds and talk about bonds for 10 minutes without even mentioning the green once. Because the countries in Africa are not part of America, they're members of the Paris Climate Accords, and it seems as though the countries of Africa are actually taking it pretty seriously. Apparently, climate change is a pretty big deal in Africa. Now, because of the lack of standardized green bonds, it's not the easiest thing to keep track of. In 2013, only 33% of green bonds reported their progress, although that number has gone up to 47% last year. Again, sorry that doesn't really inspire the confidence you were probably hoping for. Our improvements in water safety and water recycling, sewage, solid waste, and waste gas. This is consistent with the fact that foreign investments would much prefer to see climate change being dealt with rather than projects that improve more local safety and health. Thank you for listening and watching and that's all I have to say about that.